Good afternoon, everybody. I hope that everyone is doing so wonderful. Um, it was just a blessing to see so many adventurers um, being blessed and getting involved with their awards. And we thank uh, our previous two presenters who did very well. I hope I can maintain that very high standard from my friend Joel, as well as Pastor Bogdan. Um, so today we're doing the Taste Honor. And as Pastor Clifford said, we, it's an honor that we developed here in the South England Conference. And we're very, very excited. It's one of our five senses um, or sense honors, I should say. Yeah, so this one today we're going to do is taste. And I promise you, it's a very exciting honor because it's something that we do or that we use. It's a, it's a, it's a sense that we use every day. Actually, you'll even find out that we use it even when we don't think we're using it. But we'll get into that um, some more. So let me just share my screen. Um, let's do that. And let's do that. And share. Good. Well, yep, let's go back. Um, how do I? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, one more. Okay, good. So everyone can see that. Can, can, can you confirm, Pastor Cliff, you can see? You can yep, see that? Yep, yep, loud and clear. Beautiful. Okay, good. You can see that fat that fat man on the side? Yes, that we fat can see the fat man too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Good, good, good. So everyone can see. Now, I can't see everyone any, uh, like you've now gone into a column. So I'm going to be depending on Pastor Cliff to send in um, the comments from, from uh, our online viewers on our live feeds, as well as anything, any answers that I ask for, please place in the chat. I'm going to be relying heavily on Pastor Cliff and he will inform as we go on. So if everyone that is tuned in, we'd love to see you. So if you can, turn on your cameras so that we can see you. If you give a wave or so on, that would also be wonderful. Yes, good, good, good. All right, so let's push on. So the taste honor. The first thing, oh, by the way, I needed to mention, I hope that you have your worksheets. Your worksheets are all available and they're on the SEC, the South England Conference Youth Ministries website. Um, they're also on the British Union's website. And I, I've been told that we're also broadcasting on the division website, sorry, on the division page today. Um, but if you, wherever you are in the world, or brothers, wherever you are, and sisters, wherever you are in the world, in the US, in the Caribbean, on the continent of Africa, um, remember that you can collect your web, web, your worksheets, sorry, on the youth ministries pages and websites, okay? okay? Brother SEC Adam, Pastor, yes. Adam, we've, we've also, uh, we've, we've pasted the link on the chat and on the Facebook uh, chat as well. So people Wonderful. will see the link, the link Wonderful. there for it too. Okay, thank you so much, Pass. All right, good. So first thing, what is the gustatory system? You, you know, you say what we're doing taste. That's taste a very, it. very, 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 a very, very difficult word. Yeah, big word, gustatory system. It. What is that? What is that? What could that be? So the gustatory system is, or, or is, is, a, is a big word for the taste um, sense. So the sense of taste um, um, is, 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 or let's, let's put it this way. The gustatory system is responsible for the sense of taste. Let's put it like that. Yeah, it allows us to perceive different flavors from substances like food, drinks, medicines, etc. Molecules that we taste or taste it are sensed by cells in our mouth which send information to the brain. Okay, um, these specialized cells are called taste cells. Now, let me just hop that and show you what the gustatory system looks like that's a diagram of what the gustatory system is okay as you can see the brain is there and remember the slides in the presentation will be made available for you as well so that slide that i hopped past was just the information that i gave you prior okay so as you can see there the brain and you can see the gustatory co cortex on the left hand side and the thalamus um, um you can see that on the left hand side as well 
and then you can see the brain stem and then you see the paths that the information travels the neural pathways they're called yeah they travel from the taste buds on the tongue on the tongue yes and everyone knows where your tongue is so if your camera is on pastor cliff i want you to check and see if everyone can show you where their tongue is if, if anyone that has their cameras on where is your tongue let's see the tongue All right. uh, uh, yes some people showing their tongues uh, good all right so on your tongue those taste buds have taste cells and they send the information to your brain okay mm -hmm. good now speaking of taste how do we define or what does the word taste mean what does the word taste mean okay let's go here as you can see this this, this young man ha is tasting something very tasty i love them they're called lollies taste is the perception produced or stimulated when a substance in the mouth reacts chemically with taste receptor cells located on the taste buds in the oral cavity, also known as the mouth, okay? Um, those taste buds are mostly on the tongue. The reason it said mostly is because I discovered that you have taste buds also at the beginning of your throat. Could you imagine? So all the way on your entire tongue and then the, the, the opening of your throat, there are buds and receptors that tell your brain how something tastes, okay? And as you can see, this little fella here is, is enjoying a lolly. Yes, Pastor Cliff, you ever had a lolly? Do you like lollies? Oh, I love, I love lollies. Oh, I like the fruit ones. The fruit mm. ones. If you like lollies, whether the fruit ones or the milky ones, you can put that in the chat. Yeah, so put yeah, that in the us. chat. Tell yeah, us which tell ones us you what like. Flavor. The, the uh, tell which them what flavor? flavor lollies yeah. they like as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Guys, tell us what's your go favorite on. Tell flavor. Us. Right. Tell yeah. us. Please tell us. I, I like the mango one. flavor, Adam. Sorry, uh, sorry? I like the mango flavor. You like mango? I, I'm, I'm a red guy. I like the cherry, like the cherries and yeah. the strawberries. I like the yeah. reds. Someone <laughs> says having a flute flavor combo. Mango, coconut, and pineapple. Oh, so wow. Like that, that's an interesting combination, isn't it? Wow, it is. It is. Yeah. It sounds so active. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So, what then are our taste buds? What are the taste buds? And let me go to this diagram. Remember we showed our tongue just now. The buds are the sensory organs, or sensory means the, the organs that feel, yeah, that are found on your tongue sense not just feel not just uh, or, or, or it means that that pick up yeah that's what sensory means it picks up it identifies yeah sounds like a big word but we know what that means i can identify pastor cliff because i know what he looks like so when those buds identify those sensory organs identify the different tastes they tell your brain what it is on what it tastes like, whatever you're eating or drinking tastes like, okay? Here's a fun fact for you. The older you get, the less taste buds you have. Ooh, that, that sounds scary. Yeah, you bad mean news. I'm not, not going to be able to taste my mango lollies very soon? Yeah, bad news. <laughs> because, because your taste buds, like all the cells in our bodies, they grow back. They they have a lifespan. So they die. some of them die. Most of them die off and they grow back. As you get older, less and less, fewer and fewer grow back. So guess oh, what? Wow. You better eat all that chocolate while you have the chance. Oh, Don't tell I mommy go. or daddy I said that. <laughs> I, I better go have my chocolate too because if I'm going to lose it in a few years' time. <laughs> right. I'm telling you, you know, be careful. Here's another fun fact for you. These buds are protective of you. Yeah? They protect you from dangerous foods. The moment you taste something funny, your automatic reaction 
is to spit it out. Like it's automatic. No matter what you try, even if you try to hold it, sometimes you taste something that you don't like, or something that you're you're you you're supposed to have, but it doesn't taste very agreeable with you. And your automatic reaction, your body's automatic reaction is to. That's because your taste buds are protecting you from something that's potentially dangerous. Okay, good. So Adam, I thank think you. I see it. Adam, I see a problem here. Yeah, because there's, there's young people, you know, who's going to eat their vegetables, you know, and they're going to spit it out maybe and say, oh, no, my taste buds. You, you yeah, see, that's, that's, why, dangerous food. that's why I said, that's why I said, even if it's something that doesn't taste agreeable to you, you don't like the taste. It, your body is going to automatically. But guess what? We're also going to learn a little bit later that you have to tune your taste buds to accept what is good for you, okay? So thank you, Pastor Cliff, for that, for reminding us that, hey, eat your vegetables, not so much <laughs> the chocolate, yeah? Eat your vegetables, all right? Okay, so then you move on from the buds now to the taste sensations. There are five in number, five taste sensations. Now, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to see if anyone can listen in the chat um can anyone guess what they are the five taste sensations right all right guys can anybody guess some say sweet that's one one okay uh salty that's and two one says uh sour that's three i'm gonna say bitter bitter that's four Okay. Um, anybody else? So, Five. I know the, the fifth one is tricky. <laughs> Somebody says Unami. What is Unami? Is ah, five. Whoever that person is, give them a shout out, please, Pastor Cliff. Oh, Chico. Unami. Chico. Says Unami. Good. What please is give unami? them a shout out. Tell us where you're from. Whoever got that one right, that's the tricky one. Umami. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to toss it back out and say, can any of you guess what type of taste umami is? Because sweet, sour, bitter, salty are pretty self-explanatory. So can you tell me what umami is? Yeah, somebody, Pastor Marco Phil says chocolate must be that fifth one. <laughs> no, chocolate is sweet. <laughs> Savory, somebody says. That's also correct. So give that person a shout out as well, too. Okay, Richard. it's again the same one, Chica and Chico. Oh, Chica wonderful, did wonderful. Honor before. Well, he must have. Well, or or is, it a, is it a he or she? I don't want to be. I don't exactly. know. We don't right, know. Right, so if you can but give them a really, shout out, let us know where you're from. They sharp. Where are you you're from? Very, very Chico sharp. And Chico, tell us where you're from. Good. So. The five taste sensations are sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and umami. There you have it on the screen now. You should have it on the screen. Did he tell? Did he say where he's from? Uh, Chico, he's from Rochdale. Oh, it's two ones there. It's a boy and a girl. Chica is a girl. Chico okay. is a boy. So they joint. They are they are connected in the sense on the same Zoom. Wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful. Greetings but to from you. Rochdale. Give greetings to you. Greetings to Rochdale. Well done. Yes, well, well done. So, umami is really a savory or a meaty um, taste. And then there's salty, bitter, sour, and sweet. Those are the five, the five uh, taste sensations. Mm -hmm. You know, spicy foods actually, um, well, I don't want to say kill but they hurt, they hurt the pain receptors in your tongue. And they give you the sensation of heat in your mouth. So it feels hot, yeah? Um, and, and the spicy foods in particular, particular, they, they damage your pain receptors. I remember when we did this one for Ecampri, we had some interesting questions um, yes. on pasta <laughs> um, to, that, to that regard. Yeah, so be careful with the spicy foods 
And and we know we, a lot of us love our spicy. Oh, food. there goes my curry then, man. Oh no, no, no. I'm not saying get rid of it, because I love me a curry too. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what is sensation? Let's let's have a little guess. What is sensation do you think these are from? Mm. Okay. And I know these have some stuff here that we all like. Okay, guys, you want to tell us what sensation? Something salty, savory. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, some salty. are saying salty, some are saying savory. Savory, yeah. That's correct. So some of them will be salty, some of them will be savory. Like some of the um, pretzels will be savory. Um, you can get some pretzels that are sweet as well. Um, the chips, um, some of them might be salty, some of them might be savory, some of the biscuits as well, like this, the, the mini biscuits. How about these? What do you think about these? What taste sensation are these ones mm, from? Those look yummy. Oh, yes. I love gummy bears. Halal, no, halal, halal, gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, some say, of course. Sweet. It's do you think sweet. any could be sour? Oh, yes, I'm sure of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that. Yes, of course. Some could be sour as well. What about this then? What about this? Pastor, Ooh. you like this? What taste sensation do those belong to, guys? Tell us. Oh, someone's trying to say sweet. Not some so sure. sweet. Yeah. Ooh. No, those ones will be hot, spicy. Definitely so, hot. spicy. The spicy sensation is under the umami. So that's under the umami savory yes. type of sensation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Remember that. Now I've got a, a, a little trick one for you in here. Does anyone know what this is? Does anyone Ooh. know what this is? Anybody know what that is? Let's see if you are paying attention. Let's see if you know. Anybody? Let's see who is quick on that one. I don't know what that is. Uh, mm. That's something called bitter lemon, bitter melon, sorry. Ah, okay. Bitter, bitter what? Melon, melon. Oh, wow. It's a melon. It's, it's a bitter a melon. Right. melon. Yeah. And and obviously the name gives away what, what taste sensation mm. it would give you. Here's your very, very bitter taste sensation. Okay. Last one. What about this? What sensation do you think these will give? Oh, you know I, know somebody who don't, I know somebody who don't like mushrooms. Oh, so do I. So <laughs> do I. I know someone that doesn't like mushrooms at all. I know some people that are allergic to mushrooms. If some say salty. Um, <laughs> some some can be yummy. salty. Some <laughs> can be salty. Some can be umami as well, which is a savory yes. or meaty sensation. Good, Definitely. good, good, good. Yes. good. All right. In your worksheets, you should see this diagram, yeah? Um, it identifies the parts of the gustatory system, okay? So make sure that you can see this diagram. And remember, the presentation will be available to you. So just in case you miss, don't worry, okay? So you can come back so you can be able to fill in. Or I know I have some very, very astute and sensible pathfinders, especially in these times, 2020. So I know that you can use your Google. Okay, so don't disappoint us. So you can fill in, <laughs> you can fill in on your worksheet the, the various parts of the gustatory system. Now, mm -hmm. how is taste related to our other senses? Okay, so if you list our other senses, we have touch, smell, eyesight, and hearing. How is taste related? You can see there on the diagram in the brain that the taste part of the brain it's actually the smallest part of your brain, okay? It's actually the smallest part wow. of your brain. Now, there is, of course, a whole bucket load of a realm of, of sensation that's available to us beyond the five areas, okay? Which is the five main areas, as we said, sweet, sour, bitter, sweet, sour, bitter, salt, and umami, okay? That realm is called flavor. Okay, flavor. And much of this comes from our sense of smell. Could you imagine? Mm. Just ask anyone with a stuffed up nose who might be picking away at a plate of food. Yeah? 
and the food is bland. And if you don't know what I mean by bland, it's tasteless. It doesn't have much mm. taste. The senses of smell and taste are connected because they both use the same types of receptors. Okay, remember we said receptors, the, the cells that send the information to the brain. If one sense of smell is not functional, if it's not working, if your sense of smell, if you can't smell, if it's not working, then your taste will also be affected. It's not gonna function well. And we're gonna talk about a little bit later some of the things that can affect those things. The sense of touch also plays a key role in experiencing taste because your tongue, the food has to touch your tongue, touch your throat, go down, okay? Um, so, and you can have a, a great example of that when it comes to touch um, in peanut butter, for argument's sake, crunchy versus creamy. So you, you know the different texture of, of food. Same food, but different texture, okay? So, is our taste dependent on our family or is it something that we actually train, we actually tune? Mm. I have to explain that. As you can see in the That's picture, true. we have a nice little DNA strand. Now I'm gonna to toss that question out, Path, and, and see, if, see how much answers we get back. Do That's you think true. our taste preference is genetically decided? Meaning if my dad likes something, that means I'm going to like it too. Or if my mom likes something, that means I'm going to like it too. Or do you think it's something that's trained and tuned based on what we grow up eating? Go. Okay. What do you think, guys? You think it comes from your parents? You are you're born with it? Or do you actually train yourself to, uh, to like uh, certain things? What do you think? Tell us on the chat. Yes. Any responses there yet? No, not yet. Maybe some people are thinking very hard about this. Mm. Oh, some people, okay, they're coming in, says that you are trained to trained. like, just like a certain okay. thing some people are saying. Most people are saying so Most so. people are saying that, yes. All right. And then on Facebook, the Facebook ones are maybe coming in, uh, a little bit delay there. All right. But yes, generally, Generally, people are saying, you know, you are trained to right. like. Okay, so research and, and, and researchers have long investigated and looked into the origin of taste preferences, you know? It's another debate that's still going on all now. People are still discussing and debating it as we speak, all right? A recent study, uh, it was published in the Journal for Obesity, if you don't want obesity means, you know, when you struggle with your weight and stuff, um, it indicated that genes are significant, are a significant factor in a child's tendency to avoid new foods, okay, new foods, um, and it's called food neophobia, okay, genes outweigh environment by 72%, they say, of the four to seven year olds that they studied. Okay, previous studies also prove this genetic this predisposition in older children and adults, all right? They further went on to um, discover that the influence of genetics on food choices are not just the reluctance to be adventurous with new tastes, but better nutrition can be constructed from childhood years. Strategies can be created for healthier meal times which hopefully include a broader variety of foods. So what is that saying? All that's saying is they've discovered that your our genes influence what we like and what we don't like, but it's mainly down to how we are raised, how, it's how we are trained and what we are trained to eat. So we in Seventh-day Adventists, for argument's sake, um, we don't eat certain things like shellfish, like pork products like and so on and so forth therefore i can tell you from personal experience for argument's sake i remember being in primary school and there was a birthday party and they shared pizza and when the pizza came out some of the pizza had pepperoni on it now me not being fully knowledgeable as to what pepperoni exactly was i know i'm not supposed to have ham but i didn't know exactly what pepperoni was and i had some and it actually made me ill now 
does that mean that pepperoni is going to make everyone sick? But the Bible says that what we should and should not eat. But because of the, the household I was raised in, and we were raised not to eat pork and what's not, my body wasn't trained for it. So it didn't accept it. And that's exactly what could happen when it comes to the influence of genetics or and, and training and what's not. Okay? Um, so what about, but, 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 um, Adam, just to thought, what about um, um, allergies then? If somebody, you know, has a, can somebody be trained to, to get rid of a nut allergy or a, that's, know, that's a fantastic um, question. Um, so in the case of allergies, allergens can definitely be passed down, can okay. definitely be passed down genetically. Um, allergens now, is, and that's why we have the genome, the, the DNA strain you can see right there. Because if there's a, a, a DNA passed down from father to son or, or father to daughter or, or mother to son or mother to daughter, whatever the case may be, it's slightly different because that's actually your DNA strain now. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. definitely a genetic passing. And I think that's where the researchers also wanted to allude to um, not being able to. So if your if your dad, if Pastor Clifford was my dad and he didn't eat nuts, he was allergic to nuts. And now I'm his son and I'm also allergic to nuts. That's a direct genetic passing. Okay, I hope everyone um, understands that. Thank okay. you so much, Pastor. Right, so um where am i where am i where am i i am here here oh. oh what are the treatment options for someone that has lost their sense of taste lost their sense of taste now you know we're living in covid19 times so let me hit the next slide um these are some of the things that can make you lose your sense of taste your ability to taste Okay, the common cold. And you know, we're now in autumn, winter is coming and the cold and the flu is something very prevalent. Sinuses and what's not. Sinus infections, as you can see, throat infections. Um, the the salivary, salivary gland infections. So that's where the, the glands that produce your saliva, they get infected. And on the bottom, you see the big one that's affected us so heavily this year, but um i just have to say thanks to god for allowing it to happen because we have this wonderful forum here now where we're all together even though we're in our homes we're all together we're broadcasting across the world but covid19 is deadly and dangerous and it definitely affects your sense of taste okay it takes it away and that's one of the major symptoms all right um right Fever, cough, and shortness of breath have been characterized or have characterized the disease caused by the novel coronavirus, as you know. Uh, the CDC updated its list of common symptoms in late April to include a new loss of smell or taste. So, though the virus, the coronavirus, isn't particularly new, this strain that we're being affected by worldwide also affects the loss of smell or taste okay remember how we spoke about this connection between the sense of taste and smell yeah um the possibility of that is that people with upper respiratory or breathing infections yeah often have congestion or drainage and other nasal symptoms that can block the odor's ability to reach the smell nerve that's the that's what I'm being a little bit, bit technical for, for some of our pathfinders here. Okay. Now that smell nerve sits at the top of the nasal ca cavity. And again, don't worry about some of this, this information I'm giving you. It's going to be all in your presentation that you can see to fill into your worksheet. Now, the primary cause, um, particularly for with for people with extended or permanent loss of smell, of the smell function, is that the virus causes an inflammatory reaction inside the nose that can lead to a loss of the of smell um, uh, and so, right? In some cases, it's permanent or it becomes permanent, okay? That's how dangerous COVID-19 can be. Um, in other cases, uh, this, the smell nerve, the neurons on the smell nerve can regenerate, okay? And they can grow back. Remember, I, I also said um, it affects people who are older. Remember I said all the, all the folks, the taste buds take longer to grow back and so on. The, react, the, the reactors, the, re, the receptors rather, 
on the tongue and in the smell nerve will take longer or it'll be more difficult to grow back if the person is older. That's why with COVID-19, it's so um, important that we protect our elderly as well. They're so much more susceptible. Okay. Um, any questions there so far, um, Pastor? Uh, no. Um, no. Okay. No. I did forget to mention that if, they, if there are any questions as we go along, please don't hesitate to put them in, the, in, in our chat here on Zoom or in our live feeds on our platforms so that pastor can see and we can ask um, and we can get some, some answers. All right, good. So let's talk about some treatment options, okay? Some treatment options. Always speak your GP if you are experiencing issues with your sense of taste. The moment you realize you cannot taste or your taste has been affected, call your GP, call your doctor, okay? Call your doctor, all right? Your GP will then prescribe antibiotics or decongestants or antihistamines or any other form of education or, um, or they may even give you a lifestyle change that can help restore your sense of taste, all right? Commonly asked questions, should people with smell and taste loss in the absence of other symptoms be concerned about COVID-19? Yes, <laughs> very much so. Smell and taste loss can be caused by other conditions as we mentioned, but, it, but you should have a conversation with your doctor. And as I said, all of this information will be in your presentation that will be available to you, okay? Once you contact your GP, he will then tell you, or he or she, I should say, will then tell you if it's related to COVID-19, probably suggest you get a test. Um, even if it's negative, they'll be able to prescribe whatever you may need to do to rectify your loss of taste. All right. Now, number nine. Can we quote five Bible texts? Five texts from the Bible. Five pieces of scripture that refer to our sense of taste or sense of taste. Now, um, Pastor, should I throw that out and see what we get first? Yes. Before I give some it. answers? Yes. yes, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Anybody? Let's, let's, throw that out. let's go. Let's see how many of you are uh, awake. Any Bible text that refer to our sense of taste? Anything that refers to perhaps eating, perhaps, yes, or um, tasting, or anybody? Let's hear what you say. They are quiet on the chats. Um, anybody on Facebook? Let's see. What do you think? Any Bible text? Let's see if you have Bible. Mm. They're quiet, Adam. It's very quiet. Mm. What are we saying about our folks and the Bible? Mm. Listen, I, I'm not seeing. Uh, Pastor, are you seeing anyone pick up their path in the Bible? Ooh, anyone, 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 anyone have their path in the Bible? Yeah. My, 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 my background is disturbing it. Uh, no one has their path in the Bible? Oh, dear. Hmm? All right. So let's give some examples then. First one. Exodus. House of Israel named it manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey, which means manna was what taste sensation. I know that we should get some responses there now. If based on this text, okay, what sensation well, somebody was? Has a, somebody's put in there. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, oh blessed is the man. Oh, yes. That's a wonderful text. That's yeah. a wonderful text. Well done. And actually, I have that one in my examples as well. So we'll okay. get to that. But I'm, I want to know if anyone can tell me what manner probably tastes, what, what sensation Ooh. it was it tasted like. Anybody? Uh, what manner tastes like, do you think? Right. The Bible says in Exodus 16, 31, as you can see it there on your screen. Uh, well, some, while you are uh, 
Yep. Anything yet, Bishop? What did you say? Sorry, I didn't catch you. Anything yet? Anything yet? Any answers yet? No, it says uh, Anna, manna tastes like honey. Uh, yeah, but what sweet. sensation? What sensation? The sweet Ooh, sensation. Salty. The sweet bitter. one. Sweet. The sweet. Definitely sweet. sweet. Um, okay. Wafers with honey. I would have loved to have some manna. Um, right. Another text for you. Genesis 25, 28. Now, now Esau, Esau, Isaac, sorry. Now, Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for game. Mm. Um, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Now, game in this case was meat or is meat. Yes, game is meat. So if game is meat, what sensation do you think that activated? Okay. Which of the five? All right, some have already jumped in and says umami, umami. Umami, yes. Sensation. Well done, well done. Okay, another test. And we had this one earlier, Psalm 34. It will taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Now, if you used to ask a, the average person, if you can taste God, can you taste God? Huh? Um, what, what, if, you, if you taste God um, uh, and Adam just, just before you go someone yeah. on Facebook says they saw a manna once um, I would be interested if that person could share a little bit more because they said they have saw manna actually seen manna oh um, that, 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 I, I would love to know how yes so please please Pastor Phil share with us a little bit you know uh, a little bit more what you know about the manner, what it looked like, and maybe what it tastes like. Yep. Mm. Okay. Right. So, um, if you was to ask someone, Pastor, if how do you think God tastes? What, what or if someone mm. asks you, how does God taste? Oh, how does think? God taste? That's an in, that's a very interesting, interesting question. Mm. It says, "Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good." Yeah. If you had to put a verb to it, how does God? Would you say God tastes? Anybody want to go for it? Some says no sensation. No, no sensation. sensation. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you how we can taste God. Reading the Bible with a heart that's open and hungry for the word. Praying yeah. a little before we, we begin to read helps. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I come to you because I need you and I'm hungry for you. Come not just to the black and white letters of the Bible, but to the Lord himself. With this in mind, we can pray, Lord, I don't want to miss you in your word. I mm. want to meet you in your word. Focus not on ourselves, but on the Lord's wonderful person, personality, rather, and all he's done. A simple prayer can focus us on Christ in his word. Lord, I turn my attention to focus on you. I want to see your wonderful personality in your word. Show me yourself. And that, I believe, is how we can taste God. He would then, the, the word itself would then become sweet to our, to our uh, mouths, as it were, to our brains. Our receptors in our brains would then recognize the word as being sweet to taste. Mm. They would enjoy it because we enjoy sweet tastes um, or sweet things. It's not that we don't enjoy, um, enjoy other tastes sensations as well but you know we enjoy sweet probably the most okay so the word of god is sweet to taste mm -hmm. and if i can give you another example of another text hebrews 6 okay yes. hebrews 6 yeah. verse 4 and 5 and psalm 119 103 how sweet are your words to my taste yes sweeter than honey to my mouth okay right now, we have to perform a blind test, a blind taste test. Activity. Boom, bam. Let's go. See if you can correctly identify 10 foods. Now, we're not going to stay for 10 now. Okay? I'm just going to give an example of how you'll do that identification. I have a trusty um, um, assistant here. You won't be able to see her, but I have a trusty assistant here in my cosmic shadows, as you can see. 
okay? Um, you should be able to at least identify two, at least two from each taste sensation. You should be able to identify at least two foods from each taste sensation. So 10, two from each. So there are five sensations. Got to identify 10 foods. Okay, 10 foods. Now, I am going to turn around and get blindfolded and make sure that your blindfold is well over your eyes. Let me remove the beret. No, keep my beret on, okay. Keep my beret on, keep your beret on. All right, here we go. Uh, is there anybody testing that you're not, you're not peeping? I can't, I don't even know if I'm looking in the right direction at the moment. <laughs> right there, okay. right there, there, there. Okay, right, there. all right, good. So. I have, I, 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 okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, let's, let's pin your video so people can see you. All right. All right. Oh, I know what that is. That's cheese. Am I right? Yay! So everybody needs to give me a clap. Yeah! That's cheese. And cheese is from which I want you now to tell me which taste sensation do you think cheese will be from? Cheese. Right, guys, okay. tell us which I'm sensation ready. do you think cheese give, are from? How, how many examples do you have, um, assistant? Three. So that's the first one. Here comes the second one. I hope that assistant likes you. She's not giving you something. I hope so too. <laughs> Um, Somebody said the cheese is this umami flavor, umami sensation, yeah? That's correct. Now, I just had a fruit. Mm -hmm. I think it's apple. Yay! It is apple. Yes. Well done. All right. Good. Apple. Ah, ha, ha. All right. I'm ready. Number three? Yes, number three. I don't know what that one is. It's not orange, but it's sour. It's sour. Uh, I don't know what it is. You think you're good? Okay, the assistant is going to show it to you. Make sure that they, they, they see it. Oh, yes. Of the... We know what that is. Oh, dear. Uh, it's soury. It's it's tangy. It's a uh, is it green? On the inside or outside? On the in uh it's kiwi. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Three for three. Good. Right, so now you have an example of how you perform your taste test. All right. Good. So now you have somebody, an example of how to perform your taste somebody test. you trust, right? Yes, make sure someone you trust. <laughs> I had I had Auntie Chani. I had my wife. So give thanks that you know <laughs> she's trustworthy. <laughs> Good. Oh, I see Chica and Chico. Oh, the umami generals. Yes. yes. The umami general. Good. Very good. Oh, um, you see that there's a method. Um, in your presentation of how to perform your taste tests, okay? And what to do, how to fill out your, your worksheets as well. Parents and guardians, please, please, please ensure that you, you, are, you are there or thereabouts and, and um, paying attention when your children, especially or junior pathfinders, are taking this um, on the, our teens. They're a little bit, they should be a little bit more responsible, but please be aware of when they're doing this. So, you have some examples here as well from sour food. You can see some citrus foods there, okay? Orange and grapefruit and limes and lemons. 
Um, then you have some sweet foods examples there as well, grapes and apples and raspberries and blueberries and plums and stuff, peaches and stuff. And then you have some bitter examples as well. Um, I see grapefruit is there again, um, apple cider vinegar, dark chocolate, um, cocoa. They, um, I, see, I believe that's kale on the left and so on and so forth. Um, then you have some salty food examples there um, like we had earlier with chips mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then you have some umami food examples. You can see some meat there. You can see some fish. You can see some uh, bread there. You can see um, grains and some vegetables there as well. Okay, those vegetables that Pastor Cliff was telling you don't spit out. Okay, learn to get to like them. All right, good. Thank you so much.